Hello, this is Data Trader Pro with a uh, market wrap uh, right after close this time uh, on Wednesday, May 25th. Okay, so yesterday we had a bullish trend day. Uh, that played out very much. We had a almost a 40 point uh, upside move uh, in ES, SPX very close. Um, overnight, things didn't really pull back at all, which usually means that we're going higher, and we did. Uh, we had another uh, bullish trend day. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but for now, let's look at the sectors. Uh, all the indexes were up. Most of the sectors were up. Everything was very bullish today. Um, very small pullbacks on utes and gold and that sort of thing. But um, for the most part, uh, you know, biotech leading, um, oil was up, most commodities were up, um, dollar was down a bit, and that's likely why some of these were up. But um, anyway, uh, bullish continuation, we'll say. Uh, the indices were pretty much in agreement with very little uh, intra-index divergence today. So uh, everything from the CompQ to the Russell, uh, up, 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 up. Uh, market map, uh, advanced declines, um, bullish, but uh, way off yesterday's highs. So the, the, the buying frenzy, uh, the feeding frenzy that was yesterday, uh, is subdued and died down quite a lot. So NASDAQ combined only 1.82 to 1. So uh, less than two stocks being bought for everyone that's being sold and so on. Um, very similar numbers. The Dow uh, was a little more bullish. Uh, Russell uh, more bearish. We had a very uh, bearish looking trend yesterday, uh, but today it came back. So um, we thought that might have been an early warning system that maybe we were going to have a down move, but when we didn't pull back overnight, it looks like just a few Russell stocks sold off on volume, and, and that was the extent of that move. Let's go to the, the trend page. Uh, we, As you see, day type indicator, 1015 Eastern Standard Time calls, makes a market determination by, based on four key market internals. And um, and so it was another bullish trend day. And we did close above yesterday's range, so that played out. Uh, the DTP dollar weighted buying pressure uh, trended up. We had a, f a couple of pullbacks, but nothing uh, extreme. So um, those pullbacks were seen as buying opportunities and up we went. We closed uh, We closed on the dollar weighted uh, near the highs uh, even though price had a small pullback. Um, the DTP MCC, our version of the McClellan oscillator, uh, was high but nowhere near yesterday's highs. So again a similar picture, bullish but coming off uh, extremes definitely. Um, breadth overall, as you can see, narrow range on NICE advanced decline delineator, uh, also on the NASDAQ, and also on the Russell. And the Russell, really the lows of the day were basically neutral. Um, so, you know, one, one to one is neutral, whether it's positive or negative. So, um, yeah, NASDAQ volume delineator was bullish uh, and ended near the highs, uh, but... Um, NASDAQ was starting to pull back at the end of the day and you can see the trend has moved from green starting to get into the gray zone here so we're gonna watch for all these trends to to pull up we'll see if we can get a little bit of a down move started but that's not a certainty and I'll show you why in a moment uh, volatility is down uh, VVIX volatility of volatility index is down uh, and it, it's still I would say in the neutral territory down about a percent on the day. This is your large continuing <laughs> problems. I, VIX futures have been in fairly steep contango since the February low uh, on SPX and that that's gone from you know minus 20 percent to uh, you know about nine percent but nine percent is still fairly heavy contango so um, this is a real headwind for VXX and accounts uh, the negative roll yield that this is producing accounts for a huge amount of the down move in VXX uh, much more so than any selling um, yeah so uh, in terms of the uh, implied volatility indexes VXST is the fastest moving one nine day implied volatility down uh, VIX down four percent uh, VXV holding at about negative two percent further out the VIX curve uh, prices are still relatively high um, so which is fairly normal but um, 
really those prices aren't starting to come down uh, yet. So we have a fairly new front month contract, which is June. Uh, started about a week ago, so we're we have a lot of time left, but this is holding firm. So, uh, you know, I I have a feeling that volatility is not done moving. We had a move up in volatility and a pullback, and we may get a bigger move soon. But again, uh, this is our issue right now. The block trades are the are the key right now to uh, the way we're looking at the market. And we I'm sorry, we don't have a clear read on it. I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen, but I'll, I can tell you what to look for. Um, so we had, uh, we had a bullish trend day yesterday, which was this part of the chart. Uh, so we had buys and then we opened with a gap up and we, and all these late reported block trades came in. So basically when we never challenged these lows or the, the block trade levels during regular trading hours, you could have stayed bullish any time here, right? And as these came in throughout the day, that was your uh, confirmation uh, to use this line as basically your stops or support. Um, we had a large uh, closing trade, 6 million print on a SPY yesterday, right at the close. Um, but again, we had a very uh, small pullback overnight. Uh, price never really dropped. And then we got all these late uh, block trades, the 501Ks, which we see a lot, uh, at the same level of the closing print. So again, today today's trade would have been a lot like yesterday's, which is you, if you were bullish, you would have bought this. If you were bearish, uh, you could have shorted this level but had a tight stop because basically price never went never went below this. So you would have got stopped out and then you probably would have tried a long or you would have just waited. Um, but actually today the trade was bullish. Uh, we never broke below these levels in regular trading hours. There was a small gap up and, uh, and off we went. So what we're looking at now is we have some trades at the end of the day and we have a line of support. Now this is a bullish posture because you could try along here with these as a support, but we're starting to see some indications that things are getting a little tired. This is, you know, we had a 50 point up move in uh, a day and a half. Um, that's great, it is very bullish, but it's not something that you necessarily want to chase immediately. And we're going to have to wait and see. This is the thing where I said, well, I can't tell you exactly what's gonna happen. I, I would say that the smart move right now is to wait to see if we get any additional block trades with price below this level. Now obviously if that happens, this line of last trades, 207.87, I think they're all 207, 207.87, all of them, will be support, initial support. So if we do get a short entry from 209s, you know, we got uh, you know a dollar and change uh, down to go. So what, was, what are we, uh, 209.30s or something like that. And uh, so we got about a dollar fifty almost in SPY to go down to test these levels. So, so that's a very tradable move. If we don't break down these and with all this support, all this volume on block trades, you're probably going to have a nominal or, a, you know, a run up at least at, at the last high. Um, and basically the situation is, you know, QQQ agrees with that scenario. We have a ton of support here. That's your level, 108.47 to 50 on QQQ. We have some uh, prints at the end of the day, 109.21, 109.24, uh, the high, one near the high of the day, 109.36, um, where you could have, uh, it could be a local top, but again, we're still above all this support. So there's no reason to get massively bearish right here. It's it's probably better to wait to see, you know, if price is gonna drop below these last set of prints and how they deal with testing the support. S exact same scenario on IWM, big trades, price shot up above that, um, some more trades, something looking p potentially like distribution here, but but again, since we're above these, 
you know we have to be cautious about shorting with both hands in a in a in a bullish market environment like this if we break below these say the 113 even level uh then we're you know you've got two and a half three dollars down to go to to test these at 110 65 66 uh big trade yeah 110 66 is the level on iwm okay so prints are simple bullish above and we're bullish above these prints and bearish below these prints, but these would be your level to test. If you get above these and these are support, we're, we're bullish for another run up. Okay? Uh, volatility exchange traded products. Uh, I had someone ask me why they're called, why they're called volatility ETPs, uh, because technically these guys are ETNs. I can't say ETF, wouldn't be the right. Um, I'm a stickler for nomenclature, so um, <laughs> it, it, somewhat pedantic, I guess. The uh, because they're not ETFs, uh, and I will add other tickers to this as we go along. We'll just call them exchange traded products. That's why. Um, okay, so on XIV, we we have something looking like distribution. Now, for those who don't know. XIV is the inverse of VXX, basically. VXX, VXX is a long VIX futures uh, ETN, and XIV is a short VIX futures ETN. So generally, uh, when the market's going up, XIV is also going up because volatility is dropping. Uh, and the inverse for the regular long volatility, VXX. So what we've got now is some potential sell prints at the highs today. So it's a very interesting look here. We, you know, we moved up off of a lot of accumulation down here at the recent low, 2650, 27 area. And there may have been additional buys or there may have been distribution all the way up. We don't really know. And no one's going to tell us what their intentions are, certainly. But we could, we just look for the trades it turns. A large volume trade here. We couldn't really break below these levels. That was bullish. All right? Same thing here. If we can't break above, certainly the highs here, which would be uh, 3106, uh, we are bearish okay if we break above there we're bullish for xiv we also had a very large uh, vxx block trade uh, end of day or near end of day yesterday late afternoon yesterday 1.5 million shares which is a fairly sizable uh, print for uh, vxx uh, that looked like a buy but obviously uh, market made a nominal uh, new high today uh, not a massive new high but a nominal new high and uh, and VXX, uh, you know, made a made a nominal new low. So there was some buys at that low, and price is kind of holding. We're not so far below this print though, really. Uh, 1442 versus uh, 1411, so 30 cents down, which may seem like a lot, but remember, volatility m when it moves, it really moves. So you can get a few dollar up move in a day on VXX quite easily. So two to three dollars, even at these prices, you can get a, a 20% move uh, on VXX in a day. So so when volatility turns, it uh, it leaves everybody in its wake. So we're going to watch this situation. Not terribly clear because of block trades. Definitely been bullish on internals. Uh, the, this whole move up. Uh, two trend days in a row. Uh, doesn't happen that often really. You usually get a single trend day and then a range day or two and then another trend day. So we've, uh, but we're looking at this move as uh, potentially distributive. And again, if we go back to index ETFs, we're going to want to see some sell prints coming in, some new fresh prints um, up in this area. You know, certainly, and, and for agreement on those. For now, we have support and we're above support. So we have to be cautious about shorting with both hands. I think that's all we need to cover for today. Uh, May 25th, market wrap, and thanks for joining.